Hello and welcome to HIVRNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. The long fight against HIV, well, it's often been defined by managing the virus, hasn't it? We have relied on these amazing medical breakthroughs that let people live long lives. That's right. But the dream, the real end game, has always been stopping it, you know, before it even starts. Prevention, absolutely. So we're taking a deep dive today into something huge, mm -hmm. uh, a really massive strategic pivot happening in West Africa. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Ghana's incredibly proactive plan. They want to roll out a preventative HIV vaccine starting in 2026. Yeah, it's ambitious. This move, it really feels like a fundamental shift in global public health strategy, I mean. It absolutely is. Our mission today is to quickly unpack the source material. Why Ghana? Why is this happening now? And crucially, how their plan for local production, how that might change things, not just for Africa, but well, maybe the world's whole approach to epidemics. Right. And I think it's important to frame this um, around context first. Uh -huh. For decades, the big success story with HIV has been art antiretroviral therapy. A treatment. Exactly, the treatment. They manage the virus once someone's infected, yeah. letting them live healthy lives, which is fantastic, of course. Of course. But treating, what is it, over 39 million people globally? Yeah. That's a constant marathon, lo logistically, financially. Yeah, it's huge. Ghana seems focused on actually, you know, finishing the race by trying to eliminate new infections altogether. And that focus on elimination really highlights the urgency, doesn't it? The source uh, material is clear. Even with successful RT rollouts, Ghana's still facing relentless new transmissions. Mm -hmm. What's the data actually telling us? What's the reality there right now? Well, the figures from 2023 are pretty stark. Ghana recorded over 15,000 new HIV infections. 15,000 in one year. In just one year. And by the end of 2023, the country had uh, over 354,000 people living with HIV. Wow. These aren't just abstract numbers. It's a continuous stream of new cases. And it suggests that, you know, prevention efforts need a tool that's much more scalable than, say, behavioral campaigns alone. And these numbers, they really hit certain groups harder, right? It's not spread evenly. No, unfortunately not. The burden is very concentrated. We see women and young people, especially teenage girls, are among the most affected. That's concerning. It is. And geographically, too, it's not even. The cases are really clustered in places like the Ashanti, Greater Accra, and Eastern regions. Just specific hotspots. Exactly. And that level of vulnerability. Yeah. It just shows that relying only on the methods we have now isn't enough. It really demands a big intervention, like a vaccine. Okay. So if the current approach is RT managing the virus inside the body, mm. let's be really clear on the alternative. What exactly is this preventive vaccine doing? How does it work differently? Think of it like this. RT is like the damage control team. It comes in after the virus has breached the defenses. Right. It suppresses the virus, stops it reproducing, stops causing illness. But the preventive vaccine... Huh. That's the shield. Yeah. Okay, the shield analogy. Yeah. It teaches your immune system before you're even exposed how to recognize HIV yeah. and, crucially, how to neutralize it immediately. So it stops it at the gate. Completely. The goal is a total blockade. Stopping the virus from getting into cells and spreading it all. It's the same principle as, you know, vaccines for measles or polio or even COVID-19. You prepare the defenses ahead of time, which for a virus like HIV, that's so tricky. Yeah. Always mutating, evading the immune system once it's in. Exactly. That preparation, that shield is arguably the only real long term way to break those transmission chains. It really seems that way. OK, so Ghana sees the need. They know the tool they want. Let's talk implementation. This isn't just talk, right? The Ghana AIDS Commission, under Dr. Prospera Kanbong, they made a formal announcement. What's the timeline look like? It was pretty definitive. They plan to integrate HIV vaccines into their national prevention program starting in 2026. 2026. That's soon. Very soon. The first phase will involve importing the vaccines. That's the immediate step just to get the rollout started. Okay. Importing first. Makes sense. But what makes this really uh, a potential game changer is the next step local production. Right. You mentioned that they want to actually make it there. Yes. And quickly. How quickly? Yeah. When do they think they can shift from importing to having Ghanaian companies actually manufacture these vaccines? The target is, well, incredibly ambitious. They're talking late 2026 or early 2027. Wow. That's that's really fast for setting up pharmaceutical manufacturing. It is. And it's being helped along through partnerships. The source specifically mentions GIZ, the German Development Agency. Okay. GIZ is apparently providing key support. 
things like technology transfer, funding, mm -hmm. basically helping set up the local manufacturing infrastructure. So it's not just a goal. There's a plan with international backing. Exactly. It's an immediate investment in, well, long-term medical self-sufficiency for Ghana. Late 2026 for local manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that sounds almost like a moonshot. Tech transfer scaling up sterile production that's incredibly complex stuff it is complex no doubt about it what are the risks does the source material talk about the hurdles and achieving that kind of rapid transfer and why take that risk that's really where you see the strategy move beyond just public health this becomes national policy how so the government seems willing to face those you know logistical nightmares because the alternative being dependent long term on global supplies they see that as the bigger risk ah uh, okay avoid dependency right the source material lays out these three core benefits, or you could call them pillars, that are driving this urgent push for making it themselves. Okay, what are those pillars? So first is sustainability. If you rely on global supply chains, you're vulnerable. Prices can spike, politics can shift, global crises happen, like we saw with COVID. Right, supplies dry up or get diverted. Exactly. Local production means Ghana could have a steady, reliable supply pretty much no matter what's happening elsewhere. Okay, sustainability, what's number two? Second is affordability. This is a big one. When you cut out international shipping, tariffs, global pharma pricing, locally made vaccines are almost always much cheaper. Makes sense. And that means the government can provide broader access, maybe even free access. It maximizes the preventive impact across the population. Sustainability, affordability, and the third pillar, you said it makes it about national future. That's self-reliance. Okay. It means Ghana controls its own healthcare destiny essentially. They get to prioritize their specific needs, like getting the vaccine to young women in key populations first without waiting for permission or, you know, foreign manufacturing schedules. So they tailor the rollout to their own crisis. Precisely. That control ensures the medical strategy lines up perfectly with their national epidemiological situation. It's strategic control. Okay, if self-reliance and tailoring the strategy is key, let's talk targets. When those first vaccines arrive, imported or locally made, who gets them first? Which groups are prioritized? Well, based on the risk data we talked about earlier, the priority has to be those most vulnerable to new infections. So the young women and teenage girls. Primarily, yes. Young women and teenage girls. Also, those key populations identified with high exposure rates, sex workers, men who have sex with men. Mm. They'll be high on the list. And healthcare workers. Oh, absolutely. Central personnel, like healthcare workers, uh -huh. they face occupational exposure risks, so they're definitely a priority group for that initial rollout. So this is where Ghana's plan really connects to the bigger picture, right? Sub-Saharan Africa is still the region hardest hit by HIV globally. By far. This isn't just about Ghana, then. It's being watched as a potential model for the whole region. Oh, absolutely it is. You hear public health leaders saying things like, if Africa can lead the way in HIV prevention, the entire global fight against HIV will speed up. That's powerful. It is. Ghana is essentially offering a practical template. How a nation can go from being mainly a recipient of global aid to becoming a producer, maybe even a supplier, of essential medicine. Let's spell out why prevention makes such a difference, not just medically, but socially too. Saving money on lifelong RT is obvious, but what are the sort of intangible benefits of a successful preventive vaccine? A vaccine, if it works well and gets out there, it fundamentally shifts the whole story of the disease. How so? Well, first, obviously, stopping the spread means fewer people need that lifelong treatment. That frees up huge resources. Yeah. But maybe more importantly, it helps lift that crushing weight of stigma. Oh, the stigma. Yeah. If the risk of getting infected drops dramatically, then the fear, the secrecy, the judgment that goes with it, that should diminish too. It allows communities to actually heal. That's a really important point. And finally, it's about protecting future generations, yeah. shielding young people from ever having to deal with the virus their parents or grandparents battled. That kind of generational protection, yeah. it's a powerful outcome beyond just the medicine. Now, Ghana's setting up the infrastructure, but they're not doing this in a vacuum. They're building on years of global research, right? We know about U.S. researchers testing mRNA vaccines. South Africa has been key in big clinical trials. And that contrast is really important. Many countries are sort of waiting, waiting for the perfect final trial results. Right. What Ghana seems to be doing is proactively preparing the delivery system now. 
the manufacturing logistics, the funding streams, the distribution plans. They're building the pipeline before the water is fully turned on. Exactly. It's that focus on execution strategy, not just waiting on research, that makes their approach stand out. Mm -hmm. They're making sure at the moment science gives them a viable vaccine, they can get it into millions of arms, like, immediately. But leadership always comes with challenges. Oh. We can't ignore the hurdles Ghana will face heading into 2026. What are the big potential roadblocks? Social, logistical? Oh, the challenges are definitely multi-layered. First off, public awareness and trust. Vaccine hesitancy. Exactly. Yeah. Anytime you introduce a new vaccine, especially for something as feared as HIV, you need massive public education. Hmm. You have to overcome doubt, maybe misinformation. Sure. Then there's that huge social barrier. Deep-rooted stigma. The source material points out, stigma already stops people from getting tested, even when treatment is available. Right. If they won't test, will they take a preventative shot? That's the challenge. Getting those same communities, often wary, to trust and accept a new preventive vaccine, that means tackling decades of fear and sometimes institutional mistrust. And then just the sheer physicality of it, getting shots into arms across the country. Absolutely. Okay. Logistical distribution is enormous. You need reliable cold chains to keep the vaccines viable. You need transport to reach remote rural areas. And trained staff. Thousands of trained healthcare workers to administer the doses safely, efficiently. All of this, plus the tech transfer from manufacturing we talked about, it all needs sustained complex funding and infrastructure investment. It's a huge undertaking. But if we look past those hurdles, just for a second, and focus on the potential, it's pretty amazing. Ghana aiming to go from importing vaccines to making them locally, maybe even supplying neighbors, all within a year or so. It's a message of really profound new hope. For Africa, yes, but also globally. If Ghana pulls this off, it shows that the regions most impacted by a disease can actually harness technology and smart strategy to become leaders in eliminating it. A different narrative. Completely. It offers new hope not just for preventing future cases, but maybe indirectly for the 39 million people already living with HIV worldwide, just by shifting the global focus so hard towards eradication over just management. Okay, so let's bring it back to the listener. What does this ambitious 2026 vaccine plan mean for you listening right now? Ghana's building the shield for the future, but the source material really stresses something vital for today. Yeah, we absolutely cannot just wait two years for a vaccine shield. As exciting as this plan is, the single most important step anyone can take today is still HIV testing. Know your status. Exactly. Too many people avoid it. Fear, stigma, whatever the reason. But early detection is life-saving. It lets you get onto RT immediately if needed, which protects your health and stops onward transmission. Testing is the best tool we have right now. You need to know your status today. Which leads us perfectly into our final provocative thought for you to consider. If a vaccine is successful, if it's widely distributed, it tackles the medical threat of HIV head on. But those social scars, the stigma, the fear, the decades of secrecy, they run incredibly deep. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if science provides the medical solution, the shield, will that actually be enough to finally erase the deep-rooted social stigma that's clung to this disease for so long? That's a challenge, Ghana, and the whole world will still have to face even after the last vaccine is given. Mm -hmm.